and this is Sonali. Thank you all for carving out some time for attending today's webinar on Rethink, Reinvent and Reopen. To all the attendees out there, please type in any questions you might have in the Q&A section and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. I would now like to introduce our speaker, a third generation entrepreneur who started his business journey at the age of 17 by joining his family business of trading gemstones. A passionate facilitator for the last five years, he completed the trainer course with Dale Carnegie Institute and completed his action coach training from Melbourne. A quote which stuck him during training and it's something that he always lives by is, consistency is more important than brilliance. Business coaching to him is about changing lives and making the other happy. He loves to work with people and work on the challenges faced as it gives him infinite opportunities to learn himself. With that being said, I would now like to welcome Mr. Vijay Johar. Hi, Vijay. Hi, Shonali. Uh, hi, Shonali. Thank you so much. And a uh, uh, warm welcome to each one of you here. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for taking out time and attending this uh, wonderful webinar. I'll make sure that the next 40, 45 minutes uh, that we're going to spend on this program is going to be worth completely for you and it's going to be a great learning and takeaway. So let's start with the presentation. So I hope the screen is visible to each one of you. So Ali, if you can just confirm. Uh, Vijay, we can see your notes as well on the screen. Okay, one second. Yeah, now it's clear. And is it now the same? Uh, yeah, we can see the full screen mode, so you're good. Full screen mode. Perfect. Thank you so much and uh, sorry for the technical glitch, guys. So uh, thank you so much, Shonali, for that uh, lovely introduction. Uh, guys, I'm Vijay Johar, uh, uh, business coach uh, from Jaipur, Rajasthan. And as Shonali said, I've been an entrepreneur all my life for the last 20 years now. And uh, a recently found a passion that I'm uh, now following very, very uh, strictly and uh, in a very, very pleasant mode is business coaching. And I think when I think about business coaching, why I'm following this as a passion is basically uh, challenges excite me. I think uh, working on challenges excite me a lot. And I think what better moment than right now to work on challenges. So guys, in the environment right now, we are faced with all these challenges which COVID-19 has presented us. To understand these challenges is what the presentation is going to be all about today. It's going to be the three must do's that you need to do when you are reopening your business. So many of you, I think, have already reopened your business or people who are from Delhi or Mumbai are still struggling or even Tamil Nadu, I would say, are still struggling to open their business right now. So two correlations come to my mind when we think about reopening. Number one, which we are going to cover briefly, is something like restarting a race. Think about a Formula One race or a MotoGP race when there is a mishap that has happened on the track and the yellow flags are out. When these yellow flags are out and you are just preparing yourself to restart, the chances of mishap is all the more very, very uh, natural to come. So you are going to be very, very careful when you are going to restart that race and be prepared for the consequences, a well-prepared person is going to take that situation in a much better way. So we shall cover all this. And the second and most important is that this restart is somehow going to make you also feel that it's going to be something like how you started your business 10 years, two years, 20 years before. The first time that you opened your office, the first time that you opened your office to your staff and you started your business. So that is the kind of correlation that is going to come in in these slides that are going to follow. 
So let's start with the first to do. We all understand that it's never too late to learn. But guys, before we start, I would like to make this point very, very clear that learning without action is not true learning. So wherever you are, grab a piece of paper, your notebook, your diary, your iPads, your smart pens or a pen and start taking those notes. Those notes that you're going to write on that book or your smart device is basically what you're going to write in your mind to take action on. At the end of the session, I would love to have at least five action points from each one of you on what was your takeaway from this session and what are those points that you are going to take action on. So coming back to the to do number one. Guys, there is just not going to be any old ways of doing whatever you used to do in your business professionally or personally. All the things which were pre COVID pre March 2020 are all set to change. You will need to find ways in how you can up the game and be a part of this changing environment. Common sense is something that has to be very, very clear in your mind. You will have to run through the complete customer experience yourself. Because believe me, if you are into retail, for example, or you may be have running a factory or you may be having a trading office. But when a customer, a prospect is coming to your office, coming to your factory today, which is again a seldom thing, but still you have to prepare that whole run through, re rework it again and over. You will have to be a dummy customer and see that how is that customer going to come into your business? How is he going to be screened? How is he going to be feeling safe? And how is he going to feel that everything is properly aligned seeing the situation right now? So common sense is something that you really need to work on. Clean is just not enough. We all understand that our personal safety and the cleanliness of our surroundings are very, very important. But when we talk about our own factory, our own offices, I think clean is just not going to be the standard of the day. It has to be safety. You have to be reworking on your SOPs, be it for your factory workers, be for your office staff, for everybody. There has to be clear floor signs. There has to be changes in the way things are done in your office. There has to be more priority for all the hygiene and the cleanings at your office. The periodic cleaning of your door handles, your tables, everything has to change and it has to be audited frequently. So when I was having a discussion with one of my clients uh, who was also into restaurant and he's preparing himself to now reopen to uh, the public, of course, there is a mindset shift that people are just not ready right now to go into public restaurants or have food. Takeaway is still there, which is being done cautiously by people. But now what he was planning is that he was planning partitions in between these tables which virtually, which actually create, not virtually, but actually create a cabin space into that particular table of six. So you feel you're secure in that six and you are clearly demarking yourself from social distancing and you are having your own private room wherein you are sitting as if you're sitting in your own home. The same way companies are also interacting if you are into retail or if you are into an office where there is a lot of customer walk-ins. So now there are companies who are innovating and using screens like what we used to see in banks, telesystem screens, where using this same material used in face shields is being used to create a customized screen in front of the receptionist, front of the counter of your showroom to have that distancing and have your customer protected. At the same time, also your team. So you need to make your customers, your team, very, very secure and you need to make them comfortable and safe. And as we just saw that the innovation is going on, not only by face sheets, but also creating these customized screens, which are made to your measurements, flexibility going forward is going to be the key. Please keep yourself updated. 
the way science is changing, people are innovating new products, which are actually being innovated based on the fear of people when they are moving out. So these innovations are very, very important. So keep yourself updated and try to implement all those steps, all those technology changes, all those innovations that are happening, which will help your customer gain that confidence in your business. So point number two, point number one, re-educate and prepare yourself. Planning is not going to help you guys. Preparation is definitely going to help you. Point number two, the same thing that we spoke right now about re-education also will be applicable to your team. You will need to rebuild your team because they have got into a shell in the last two months being in their homes and just watching WhatsApp or YouTube videos. And now that shell has to be broken. You as a leader has to set that example on day one by giving themselves in a position to be feeling safe because guys, we as entrepreneurs are not frequently going to be in interaction with customers in these days, but our team is definitely going to be doing that. When our team is giving themselves an opportunity to get exposed in that market, going out to their customer, meeting them, you back there in your office have to give them that confidence. Think about when these airlines just started and uh, they were preparing themselves to start flying again. What did they do? These air hostesses, air hostesses were made to wear scientifically certified PPE kits. You have to have that empathetical view on your team. When those air hostess feel safe, they were just going there and they were doing their job well because they were feeling that I'm absolutely protected from all that exposure, which is lying out there in the airport with so much public around them. We understand that this staff, these people around in your office do not have uh, an option right now, but, but please don't take that as an opportunity to exploit them. Please have that empathetic view and do the needful to make your staff feel competent. Give them that confidence. Flexible hours, work from home is the new normal. Now, when you're going to work on your HR policies, make this whole team inclusive in that policy making because we all right now are facing this situation for the first time so instead of we as an entrepreneur as a factory owner as a shop owner as a trader breaking our heads alone and trying to innovate new things in the hr policies put that idea on the table in front of them ask them for options ask them for opinions make them inclusive in this HR policies and make these shifts of working very, very flexible for them, keeping in mind and keeping them on track with the performance that is required from them. Communication at this particular time has to be very, very clear and very, very important that it has to be more frequent. You will have to have clear broadcast groups, maybe within your staff, within your teams, uh, maybe a, a email communication or a phone communication if you have a small team, but just see to it that you are there communicating with them and standing toe to toe with them and making them feel that my leader, my business owner, my boss is there helping me and understanding the situation and acting accordingly. He's keeping my safety first before the business. Something that has to be very, very clear. So please don't dictate, but keep them inclusive. I think will be the norm right now. When you create these policies, do it. Please don't do it uh, more frequently or changing these policies every two, three days. Maybe you can think of improvising it. But that is why the brainstorming is very, very important. And these standards and protocols of working has to be set on day one itself in front of them. And then the improvisation, which is, we already saw that flexibility is going to be the key, can be a part of this whole process and journey. The last point, guys, please remember, productivity may take time. Because as we spoke, they were in a shell for the last two months. It's going to take time, but you as a leader, as uh, the, uh, the management who is just below you, who is taking care of the different teams, I think they have to just see 
that these standards are very clearly set with them and the progress is there and the test and measure of their productivity is spoken to them on a regular basis so that they know where they are standing and where they need to go. Remember guys, team is the most important component in your business cycle. They are the ones who tackle, who help and who support the most invaluable asset in your company, which is the customer. And that customer is the person who gives you all that revenue in your business to support your business and support you as a business owner. So take care of your team, which will help the team take care of the customer and the business on a whole. Point number two, work on your team and rebuild them, give them that confidence. Number three, redoing all the deals in your company right now. As we all know, and I think we have seen these examples from the automobile industry right now, the way they are coming out, tying up with financial institutions, banks, and uh, now they are coming out with EMIs, which are as low as 999, 5000, 5500, but without a down payment uh, deals to take the car, just taking your financial papers. So guys, what they are actually doing is they are reworking the complete deals. They very well know, and I think this is the same point that we spoke at the starting of the presentation, they can't be the old ways of doing business or selling products or your services. Don't confuse this with discounts. Automobiles, if you see right now, is a clear example for this. More than the discounts, they are right now working on sustainability because discounts can maybe help you sell the product today. How about tomorrow? and the next day, and the months to come, and the years to come. Because COVID is just not going to disappear, disappear tomorrow. So have a clear cut target. And remember the 2080 rule. Most of your businesses, what I've also come across, the top 20 customers, which by which I mean, if you have 100 customers in your portfolio, you will generally see that the top 20 of them 20 customers actually generate 70 to 80% of the revenue in your business. The clear target today should be the first 20%, the A grade clients that we talk about. If you have not made that analysis, sit down with your sales team, make that analysis, take out that database and have that top 20% niched out from that database and work on them. Because when we are talking about 70-80% of revenue today, guys, the focus should be clearly on them. Don't waste your time on the remaining 80 customers. You can touch them maybe next month, but the first month what you need is to survive. And to survive, this 20% is what is going to help your business and not the remaining 80%. Because seeing the last three years, you will also realize that the 70-80% revenue of your business came from these customers. So get your analysis done. Take out that data and get your numbers right. Have these deals also for the first responders. When you rework your deals and you put out that advertisement on your social media network or on the WhatsApp, on the mails, or directly through your sales representatives, incentivize the first responders and let the world know that you are selling and these are the customers who bought them first. If you are into retail, you can definitely do that. If you're a trader, maybe you cannot out your customer, but still incentivize them so that they are more inclined to buy from you rather than somebody else. We already spoke about the first 20 customers. Right now, please do not work on the prospects. Please do not waste your time thinking about new customers, thinking about data buying databases. Because if you cannot please a customer who was buying from you for the last three, four, five years, you can definitely not uh, convert a new prospect. This is not the time for conversion guys. The clear cut focus right now should be on the top 20 customers. And if you still want to give that niche to the new prospects out there, if you are into retail, for example, if you want to just touch those prospects out there, give them an incentive again that if you come out and try with us, this is what we can work, work for you, work with you, uh, a specific special deal or a specific deal which will help you convert that customer who may be a customer of your client. Because remember, he is 
the, your your uh, competition also is in the same situation right now. So if you are going to adapt well, you may be in a better position than your competition, and even your prospect may feel that you are a definitely better uh, businessman right now to work with rather than your competition. So show them, and you will have a chance of tapping those customers also right away. So deals go on. Remember that it's not that when you open. For example, we opened in June first week, and we came out with deals. Nothing happened, and we just uh, stopped those deals, or we just keep, kept those the, those deals going without any results. It's not going to work, guys. Have that change, adapt methodology, clear cut in place, and a test and measure of all your marketing activities should be there on your graph. If you have uh, heard of Instagram, Facebook uh, post, there is an option which says traction. So what they what is traction all about? They give you analysis that which post has actually garnered more views or more clicks. So the same test and measure also has to be uh, running in your own WhatsApp, mails, or campaigns, whatever you do. You will have to keep them going because you don't know which is going to work right now. So number three, you have to rework all your deals and keep that momentum on all month long and in the time to come. Uh, guys, before going ahead, I hope the points are there in your notebooks and there are a lot of takeaways which we are going to come back in the question answer session at the end of the program today. Number four, reopening announcements. I'm sure a lot of you have got uh, by now videos from a lot of your restaurant uh, uh, friends or maybe as some restaurant owners who uh, you were a regular customer to or a retail shop or something. They must have showed you that how they are reopening. Think about all these uh, customers, how they are building that excitement, all these uh, business owners, how they are building that excitement in their business. As a business owner, even if you are a trader, you have to build that excitement and you have to show them that now you are more than gung ho to go and you are ready for that customers to come to your business and buy from them, buy from you. So announce every step. Start your pre-opening announcements rather than just saying them to your customer that we are now open and uh, you can order us. When you have done that, it means that you are well prepared for your opening. Maybe a week ago, maybe 10 days ago. Show them that we are opening on from the first, uh, depending on the government's uh, notifications. And we, this is how we have prepared ourselves to keep the environment safe for you if you are into retail. Show them that excitement and announce every step however you are going forward. The announcement thing goes on with your team member also. Remember how you opened for the first time. What did you do? The same steps have to be followed. When you think about reopening, think about opening that business for the first time and I think the steps will automatically follow in your mind. And do follow them. We spoke about the deals in the last slide. We'll have to be clearly working on every deal and announce it very, very clearly because people should know that you are proactive and ahead of the game right now rather than sitting and waiting for things to change and happen. Think about viral dates, viral posts. Think about WhatsApp messages that you're getting right now. How those WhatsApp videos or, or uh, images go viral suddenly. What is that thing that makes them viral? It may be an interest. It may be something which is done out of the box. It may be something which is very, very innovative. Creating videos today is not a big deal at all. Think about it because I think this is the next big thing and which is going completely viral. Even if the person is not concerned in your business, he will be talking about you just because of those viral videos. Create something which is out of the box and people will love it, I'm sure. Uh, just to give you an example, I'm sure a lot of you would have uh, seen a uh, live boy ad coming in. So what happened there exactly? If you remember that ad, that you live boy se hand doye ya nahi doye, but koi bhi sabun se hand jarur doye. In uh, from uh, live boy, that was the ad. 
ही वॉज नॉट से प्लीज आप जाके मार्केट में लाइफ बॉय का साबुन ही खरीदे और उसी से आप हाथ दें The same way there was an ad in YouTube which uh, Coke uh, came out with. So the view has to change. You cannot just come in the face of your customer and show them that you you are there to sell. You should show them that you are there because you are concerned about the safety. I am sure because at the end your branding is there. The first person that they'll remember is you, and that will not be because of the name there, but because of the kind of innovation that you did in your ad. Number five. redo your celebration reopen your office as if it is open for the first time celebrate the surviving with your team i'm sorry to say this but yes we have survived guys there are people out there when you see statistics of united states of america when you see statistics of france italy even in india there are a lot of people who lost their lives in covid-19 because of this disease this pandemic we have survived this because of our precautions and we need to celebrate the surviving when we open up office we need to help the team feel special about it if you are into retail a very very clear thing when you have that first customer coming into your uh, restaurant coming into your retail shop coming into your office take a photo with him with his permission and put that on instagram and that Hey, uh, Vijay! It's, it was so great to have you back, and it was so great to know that you are safe and sound, and you are still there with us as a supportive customer to us. Do that. It will not only make that customer happy, but it will also make other customers who you have out there in the market feel that you really care about them, and you you are going to make them feel special about each and every step. Create that uh, thing that is going to you know break that shackles in the mindset. to maybe take that safety precaution and step out because believe me there are percentage of people who are right now stepping out from their homes taking those precautions and going out to restaurants and buying also it is not that nobody is buying right now if we are going to have those eyes open and looking for those customers who are buying we are going to see them what we are seeing right now is not those customers but we are seeing right now is a very very uh, empty market where there are no customers at all there are customers it is just that you are eyes have to see that instead of the empty markets out there when you have a neighbor in your office because your neighbor may may have opened in a similar time or two or three days in in difference celebrate that opening with your community also give them a call tell them that they are happy uh, you are happy for them and you are happy that they are back they have survived and uh, wish them all the uh, good luck you will see that community people the people around your offices recommending you instead of any other business in your competition in your segment have that positive approach because people like to speak to people who are positive and happy so have that attitude which is very very important especially in the situation right now this challenging pandemic that we are in right now make it memorable and the news media is going to cover it make going to make it viral for you because even the media today is hungry for good news whenever you open that tv and you change those channels what you see is just negative news so create that positive vibe and be that person who is going to give that positive news in that market so number 5 redo all your celebrations and make this reopening memorable uh, more memorable than the first time that you opened your business number 6 i think it speaks uh, leaps and bounds and as business entrepreneurs i think most of the business entrepreneurs i have come across are the weakest in this and as marcus lemon is very very nicely says if you don't know your numbers you actually don't know your business you don't understand your business when you start this business guys then the the most important point right now should be when we talk about surviving is how are we going to achieve the break even i'm sure a lot of you don't even understand right now what exactly the break even is right now get your numbers rework on the complete fixed costs that are there in your business and see what is the exact break even you need to achieve one to cover your cost number 2 that you should be looking at is profit break even remember the business out there is to support the business owner 
you will also need funds to run your own investments your future planning financial planning and also your uh, personal and your uh, family costs how are you going to take out that work on those two things break even and profit break even and have those numbers tracked every day every day you need to be knowing and you need to see that you are going to achieve that break even figure and secondly the profit break even figure as soon as possible within those 30 days time because you very well know that if that break even is going to stand in red the first month the second month and the third month it's going to be really difficult and your decision making is going to go haywire you may be wanting to take out people so be before that start working on your numbers get this break even profit break even figures right away and do those test and measuring every day if you are using the bank loans moratorium please do it very very wisely please take your ca your accountants your financial advisors advise very very seriously because there may be glitches 3 months you don't have to pay the emi fine but the interest piles on for those 3 months and when you pay that emi 3 months later the interest of all those 3 months also has to be paid that is not being waived as per the policy that has come up so have your financial advisors in place have a talk with your cas and use all those government uh, schemes very very wisely personally and in your business and guys cash today in your hand is going to be like gold believe me so have more cash in your hand and that's only possible when you are going to achieve that break even and profit break even figure as soon as possible in that particular month very important guys number 6 remember run your numbers know your numbers and see what exactly and have this tracker the first thing in your office in front of your table in front of your eyes point number 7 i think this we'll need to spend some time here because we need to clearly rework and we spoke about it in the second or third slide that how these automobile agencies how these uh, mnc's are completely reworking their marketing and sales plan you will maybe even need to do a swot analysis once again because every segment right now in the business has changed because of this pandemic there are some businesses for example pharmaceuticals who have gained there are some businesses for example luxury goods who have been affected badly you will have to do those swot analysis very very clearly do a research on what exactly the product is how is it going to be beneficial in this current scenario and how the product is sellable right now or you need to repurpose your business i think that is going to be very very important going forward because remember the fear which is there in the market is also creating opportunities for a lot of companies as we right uh, uh, just spoke a few minutes ago about the screen that was there in front of uh, the reception table which is customized and built for your office so this is basically an innovation out of fear when the customer or the public go out and see all this so you will have to clearly rework out on the swot analysis do that research in your market understand what your customers are doing and Uh, what your competition is doing sorry and also understand the market and accordingly make your marketing and sales strategies out there when you put out a message of this marketing or any post that you are going to put out there to create more revenue more sales what you will have to clearly note remember that life boy ad remember that coca cola ad remember that boman arani ad which talks about empathy right now which talks about the safety of the customer safety of the client the same way your marketing activities have to be very very clearly focused on their safety and do a very very subtle branding at the end of the ads which will help them remember that boss ye ad dekha tha yaar wo ad kitna acha matlab kiska ad tha that is what they are going to remember but the reason for them remembering your company is going to be that innovation that you made in that ad so have that empathetic view and you when you go out there to your prospects or your customers have that as your focus and not a selling point on the face of your customer when you are reworking on your uh, 
marketing and sales plan there there are going to be more and more questions in your mind at the same time your customers minds so think about top 5 things positive and negative which may be connected to your business and your product when you go out there or you tell your sales team to go out there and do that marketing address those negative points on day 1 itself because you know when you are having those questions the customer are obviously going to have those questions also in their minds so have those questions answered straight away like an faq and ask your sales team to highlight those five positive points that are there which will help them make that buying decision easy for your prospects or your customers and test and measure which we already spoke about in the accounts and in the slides before also is going to be a very very crucial uh, methodology in your marketing and sales you cannot just go out there and spend money saying that you did marketing and you did sales uh, you did marketing of your products but nothing worked if it is not working guys there is some issue with the marketing plan you need to rework out the same have that test and measure very very clearly in place and work on that test and measure and accordingly make changes in your marketing uh, gimmicks think about those analysis what google gives you think about those uh, traction reports that facebook instagram give you do the same test and measuring report templates in your business marketing activities and work according to the marketing activities that are working and also improvise those who are not working or maybe scrap them when you create videos for your marketing activities when you create videos for your testimonials please don't copy guys it has to be innovative technology today is so fast that if you are going to copy people are just going to know it the moment they see the first 10 seconds of the video and the moment you they see them that that it is copied they are not going to remember you are not going to wait for the video to get completed and your branding may get completely dissolved so think out of the box and think about addressing those positive things about the product and addressing those negative things up front as an faq when your sales guys are talking to your customers more than a crisis right now guys it's an economic transformation adaptation to this is going to be the key when we talk about adaptation relationship today is going to go a long way train your sales person train your marketing person on creating that relationship have those frequent candid calls with your customers with your prospects clearly spreading that message of positivity make them happy tell them that everything will be all right i'm sure they will want to talk to you or only such persons who have this communication with them because most of i so i would say 9 out of the 10 guys whom they are talking to are going to talk about covid ne ye kar diya covid ne ye kar diya sab kharab hone wala hai and all that stuff be that change and when you are doing that you are what you are doing is building a relationship which maybe your competition is not so when they are thinking about buying when they are thinking about start restarting their business the first person that they remember is you and not your competition and relationship is going to be the key to achieve this train them accordingly and if possible script them script these points and give it to your sales staff so that they are more standardized in their communication that they are making to your uh, prospects and the customers point number 8 thanking everybody you guys it's a scientific fact and i i truly believe that gratitude reciprocates in every form so today when you are going out there when you are celebrating your survival when you are celebrating that you are uh, still there in the market and you are there to open try using handwritten letters try putting handwritten notes uh, in a piece of paper and sending to the customers that you are back there and you are happy it will only make them feel that you are concerned and you are also prepared for the situation right now please don't reply on those group whatsapps or please don't send them group whatsapp forwards that's not going to show the effort that is really needed uh, the customer to make him feel special handwritten notes believe me that's the old school way it works like magic and for those of you who want to really 
work on this gratitude work on uh, thanking everybody i think you should read the book secret or oblique how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie i think it's one of the best sellers in the same and i think this is something which talks about common sense very very clearly but this is right now very very important because relationship is nothing but common sense so create that positivity the in the environment and be thankful to your team to your customers and everybody sending this gratitude is only going to make affirmations also to yourself it will not only make you feel positive from inside but it will make you feel very very uh, good and which is very very important today because so much depression around so much mental pressure around i think giving that positive call and showing that message of gratitude when you are calling is going to make you feel very very contented this is the first thing that you should start practicing today if you haven't done till now once this session is over make that list of top 10 customers or people who are really concerned with you personally or professionally and give them that call and thank them and see what happens at the end of the, those 10 calls you will feel it yourself each and everything and take out time and start reading these two books that is secret or how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie when we talk about uh, when we before coming to the last to do point number 9 i would like you to go through the path the business is following right now so if you see the uh, position right now this is where we were for pre covid 19 that is march 2020 and then there was a lockdown that happened that on in one single day closed down everything so there was nothing happening in the business and the sales dropped to a completely new level and we saw something which was never seen before and that was in april after that there were some businesses which adapted uh, which, which were allowed to open like uh, your uh, the essential uh, commodity markets and your pharmaceutical market after that may onwards we saw a gradual opening in different cities of india and different businesses started opening depending on the non containment and the containment zones this is where we started to uh, think about survival this is where we started to plan prepare ourselves to reopen and from there on guys there are three parts that your business is actually going to take so path number 1 which we see in this red graph here is buoyant trading the path number 2 is blue which is going to be a little tough but it's going to help you survive the business and at the same time in the long run it's going to take you to a greater height or to a level which were there in march 2020 the third one if you are not going to make yourself prepared if you are not going to work on your business if you are not just going to plan it may create a not so happy situation for your business where you may start feeling cash flow challenges and you may also eventually go have to go for a closure try to avoid we all do not want to see such paths in our business definitely in our, in our lives the real thing that we need to do and the tens of thousands of businesses who are not aware right now about how you need to work on is this and this is how the businesses are failing when you can't do the business in the same way that you were doing pre covid 19 what are you going to do i think this is the right time you should think about getting a business coach for yourself and helping your business survive this particular period drive from this and following to this we are going to thrive the business get systems into place in your business and help that business drive through these challenges which is going to make you better prepared and help you to thrive when the time is improving day by day and not going down as seen in the graph which no none of us want so keeping the momentum on is very very important and keeping the systems in place because when we say today 
uh, that we have all the time in our in our uh, which is available pre march 2020 what we used to say that when we wanted to do something in our business work on our business work on our systems we always used to say are yaar time hi nahi hai business mein mere paas ye kaam hai wo kaam hai i just don't have time for this what about today what about the last two months the last two months are gone but you still have time today many of the officers or the most of the officers are just working for 4 5 6 hours a day what about the remaining 18 hours take out the 8 10 hours of sleeping apart from that start working on your business get expert advice and sail through this in a better way so that you can get on that highway when that's really time to take your business to different levels point number 9 is clearly rewriting your plan those of you who have uh, planned your coming financial year 2021 uh, in march or those who would have planned a first quarter of your financial year are all going to rewrite your plan guys very very clearly because the situation is not very very uh, same it's completely different if you are planning failing to plan you are planning to fail this 90 days plan has to be clearly set you have to set your next 13 weeks with the plan of action that how are you going to go about achieving your goals that's going to be the starting point of keeping you on track and giving you a path to move forward in your business and also personally rewrite your plan work on the 90 day plan and take one quarter at a time right now you cannot think of a uh, too long a scenario in especially such challenging times which are so dynamic that every 10 days we are seeing a new normal the lockdown was over suddenly we saw kolkata is now lockdown till july 31st the lockdown was over we saw a lockdown in tamil nadu we may see a similar lockdown in delhi or bombay so it's so dynamic you will have to be preparing yourself one quarter at a time and prepare that 90 day goal and you can't afford to make such simple mistakes wherein you are not working on the same so as we already addressed in the marketing and sales plan address those negative points and highlight those positive points taking it forward get help as we already spoke about in the last slide because breaking your head alone is just not going to help in your business right now because the same ideas are going to come over and over again because we are working 15 20 years in the same business it's really difficult at this stage read books so that you can get that idea in your business and start implementing it and taking action on it so before uh, before ending this uh, presentation most businesses today if you see we were in the lockdown phase in april and may so if you see on the top we have the personal traits and at the bottom of this faces you have the business traits most businesses right now are, are in between phase 2 and phase 3 they are either training preparing planning or maybe some of them who have opened in may are warming up to that market that how are we going to work on it so get that mobilizing now get them into thinking mode get those policies all inclusive with your complete team is very very important because believe me if that preparation is not going to happen today and when it's time to get into sprint mode it's not going to be easy and working on the warming up stage well is what is going to create yourself into a niche which is going to give you that first mover advantage think about repurpose if that product is into luxury market and it's not going to sell very, very soon think about repurposing so when we talk about repurposing let me just touch upon this repurposing uh, very very briefly i heard about uh, read about an uh, article from us wherein a new restaurant was started with wood fire pizzas so this restaurant there had a live uh, huge size ovens in place which used to give the best pizzas in new york now what do you think these guys did when in the lockdown happened so these guys actually converted those ovens into making face shields because these ovens were good enough to model that particular material which we used in the face shields to create that face cover that was required to create that uh, office partition that is required that is the kind of repurposing when we talk about india think about asian paints 
how they repurpose themselves to create san to uh, make sanitizers we need to think about such repurposing also or partnerships such as 3m and ford partnership together to create ventilators in us they started actually manufacturing ventilators and supplying ventilators there because they knew that these factories are not going to work uh, in the uh, automobile or in the uh, 3m uh, core business area that they are there try to work on those tech platforms i'm sure this kind of brainstorming and warming up is going to help you take that sprint when the market is ready for you and it's going to give you that first mover advantage very very clearly to finish up guys as we already spoke about take those 90 days planning look at the 90 days at a time and work on those goals and divide them into 13 weeks get help get a coach and get a 90 day plan working and divide it into 13 weeks i'm sure it will give you that path to work on and take your business not only surviving this period but also thriving forward as we spoke at the starting of the presentation i'm sure you have at least five points which i'm going to uh, love listening to in the q and a session uh, going forward thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience it was great uh, to be here and be in between all of you giving you these insights what we clearly see as the way forward for business professionally and also personally thank you so much guys over to you sonali Sonali Uh yeah thank you so much Vijay for such a wonderful session it was absolutely uh, great and so informative i'm 100% sure that all the attendees were able to benefit uh, from it and obviously have some takeaways so thank you so much once again uh for a q and a round i request all our attendees to put in any questions any doubts that you might have and please let us know if you have any questions uh the first question that i would like to ask is uh, which is on everyone's mind really it's about the emerging sectors uh, uh after covid 19 uh, what which sectors do you think uh, would be the most uh, you know preferred uh, so uh, taking ahead uh, especially in this situation i think uh, so not uh, essential goods are something that, that i think is in everybody's mind but apart from these essential goods there are lot of luxury goods which are connected to these essential goods also so of course pharmaceuticals is going to be the way forward but uh, just to give uh, all the viewers here a, a, a warning that guys don't get into imports of these covid 19 products such as masks and all these things from china because there are specialized businessmen who are working on this it is just not going to be a cake walk for you getting those products there importing them and selling in the market so before doing all that please do your own research very very well because right now no business is a cake walk. so definitely for me the two sectors which are very very uh, uh, promising to look at right now is the essential goods and uh, pharmaceuticals for sure Uh, so the next question is from Ashwini Sharma, uh, and the question is how to survive and thrive the handicraft sector. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ashwini, for that question. Uh, I think, uh, especially for the handicrafts and the jewelry sector, which is more into luxury, and I think most of the handicrafts businessmen here, uh, even in Jaipur, it's a big business, are into exports. right now what you should be looking at is the models what asian paints what 3m what uh, ford and all these guys have repurposed so apart from being in your core because it's very very important that expertise that you have in your business the experience that you have in the last 15 20 years is going to help you repurpose your business for sure think about partnerships think about being a customer yourself and why will you buy a product if you are going to answer those questions yourself then definitely you're going to find the answer for the question that you're asking here right now so being able to repurpose and also being making yourself in the customer shoes and seeing that why would i buy those products is something that we should be clearly looking at as a business owner uh 
Um, so the next question is from Mr. Vijay Kumar, and he is asking, what is the impact on manufacturing sector and IT sector as well? So I think IT sector is something that is really going to boom. We saw what happened to Zoom. Uh, it actually zoomed uh, Nasdaq and all these uh, stock markets, and the valuation is skyrocketed like anything. Every business right now, believe me, who are not in the IT sector, who are not using technology, are just going to look at technology as the mainstay of the business. So if you're looking at the IT sector, a definite yes, that's something that you should be clearly looking at because right now, if you see pre-March 2020, people were looking at their mobiles just for WhatsApp, YouTube, and all their entertainment. Post-March, what has happened is today, when we see Zoom webinars happening, meetings happening, Google Meet happening, people are now actually realizing that this mobile technology computer can be actually used as a profitable venture for their business. So a definite yes for an IT sector. Try to give those platforms to these guys. Think about creating virtual showrooms. Think about using this technology for every business. I'm sure this business is going to boom. About the manufacturing, I think this is a very, very generic question here because it again depends on the product as Mr. Ashwini also asked about the handicrafts. I'm sure he was also into manufacturing. Manufacturing is going to stay for sure, especially with the negativity of China imports and where in a country like ours, where I think more than 70% of the products are being imported from China and we are talking about Atma Nirbhar and the government clearly portraying local for uh, local, manufacturing sector is going to be there to stay. And especially with the FDIs coming in, people like Apple, people like Tesla, people like so many other companies coming in, they will be needing components, which they'll be sourcing from local companies rather than importing it from other countries out there. I think that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the next question is from Mr. Rajendra Shah, and he's asking, how do you see education sector poised now and post COVID? Sir, I think uh, what we're doing today in this webinar also is part of education. So education sector is there because it's, for me, learning stops only when you die. It's just that education has to go today hand in hand with the IT sector. Because where we see all these schools going virtual, I think the person who's going to have the advantage of IT in their education system is going to not only survive, but clearly thrive in the industry. So try innovative ways of giving that education, having that last mile reach of your courses to each one out there. Uh, just think about you and me would have thought about getting your son or daughter uh, coached for a guitar by an instruction uh, sir in Pune. We are doing that today, right? We are getting guitar classes from Delhi, from Pune. Was it not possible before March? It was definitely possible before March. Zoom was there, Google Meet was there, Skype was there. But the way it is being used today, the people have realized again. So clearly, use that IT technology to your advantage. Education is there to stay, sir. I'm sure if you're just going to use IT, I think you are going to find a multifold increase in your customer base, what you would have seen in just a classroom, definitely. Great. Uh, and so while we are talking about the sectors, so two of the most asked questions by people are, uh, what, when do you think the travel industry and the real estate industry would go back to normal, according to you? Uh, so let me uh, come to the uh, uh, real estate uh, industry first, because the travel industry's situation is, I think, very, very uh, uh, strangely affected. But uh, if you come out to the real estate, I think there are, I spoke to a lot of real estate guys in the last two months. And uh, there has been a lot, of, if you talk about Jaipur, for example, now we had a containment zone in the walled city. Now, all these guys who were emotionally attached to the old city, they wanted to stay back in their parental homes. And all this is just washed away in the last two months. Because in these two and a half months in that containment zone, they just couldn't move out of their house. They couldn't even come down from the stairs and come to the road. All the demand, 90% of the demand right now is coming from this walled city as the market is open. Nobody, believe me, nobody just wants to stay inside the walled city anymore. The demand is there for, from all these people to move out and buy a home out there. So it is, again, how are you going to repurpose? If you are into that luxury segment where you're selling flats of four or five crores, yes, that's not going to sell 
uh, right now for sure it's going to take time how are you going to maybe even convert those projects into smaller flats make them affordable or get that ticket price to those prospects out there who are actually looking for a property buying is how the real estate sector is going to be working at because at the end of the day it's not an expense it's an asset that is being created so people are definitely after the essentials people are going to look at creating assets right now which is going to stay with them for the long time so that comes to the real estate thing for the travel industry i think uh, virtual is not going to be there very very clearly you can't do make a person do virtual diving you can't make a person you know to uh, roam paris virtually all that can be a flashy gimmick for the travel industry but they are not going to really earn out of it it's definitely going to take time what the first thing that is going to uh, come up in the travel industry is business travel because see business is the first thing that is going to open and when we are talking about a crisis today uh, in the economic situation we are right now people are actually going to find it difficult to go out there and have a leisure travel seeing the situation because they don't have that surplus income also with them business travel the definite yes so how are you going to repurpose your business a uh, hotel business into creating that niche where you can give the ticket size and also help those business travelers moving around give them the sense of safety in your property i think the travel industry is going to increase uh, in the business front first and gradually as we see a drop of cases maybe in the luxury uh, travel or the leisure travel industry for sure uh, so we have one more question from mr bharat jain he is asking uh, he is saying that we give toys on rent uh, and we also give franchisees of this business but after covid the inquiries have fell drastically uh, can you please tell us any strategy to retain those uh, so mr bharat uh, what i see from the question is you have uh, been giving toys on rent under your brand okay fine so uh, let me take two things uh, these are two different aspects one is the inquiry on the franchisees where now business owners are not want wanting to take sorry take franchises and the second is that you yourself are giving toys on rent so when we take toys on rent i think this is something very very correlated to the e-commerce business too think about the ad what dominos gave what is happening right now is people don't want children to come out because adults cannot go out there to the toy shop and choose the toys very very clear there has to be children around and as a parent today i would definitely not want my child to go out with me to the market and get those toys even though if they want it as a entrepreneur today try to reach to that customer rather than waiting for that customer to come to me think about dominos how they are uh, giving that ads that it's going to be a touch free experience think about using technology and creating that virtual showroom and giving those links to your customers and showing them that this is the availability with us this is the kind of pricing that we have shortlist three products let us know our client our uh, customer service agent with all those safety measures will be there at your door step standing out at the door keeping that 6 feet difference and showing you those toys and whichever you want with the contactless payment giving you that toy handing it over to you well sanitized and in a very very safe package if you are going to make that safety feeling associated with your product people are out there in the market waiting for those products don't wait for those customers to come in they are not going to come in anytime soon instead of them reaching out to them is going to work out uh, right now and talking about franchise models i think you should be looking at uh, correlating this to the automobile industry when we talk about franchise any franchise today looks at a upfront payment of a franchise fees and then the royalty what we understand is royalty is not something people easily look at because that is something comes out of the business that if you do business what you going to earn from that you are going to pay so that is a completely different chapter the franchise owner right now doesn't have that 5 lakh 6 lakh 7 lakh franchisee fees to be paid to you break that up into small amounts as a business owner what do you think you will be able to pay today you will be able to pay 50000 rupees break that 5 lakhs into 10 months or 12 months easy installments get an agreement signed and make these payments easy so that as the business is growing they are paying out of not from their pocket but from the business which will make them more confident about it so have that empathetic view and i'm sure that repurpose in your plan of uh, payment is going to help them uh, choose you rather than any other franchise out there in the market because believe me other people are not doing it so easily okay uh, so we'll just get to the last question uh, of the session now 
so vijay can you just tell us about uh, the kind of coaching services that you can provide for any of the uh, business owners out there who might be looking to get a business coach uh, absolutely get absolutely business. yeah thank you so much sonali for that question i think uh, uh, guys what model we work on is not one to many but one to one the functions of business if you are selling a service you're selling a product into handicrafts into toys or into anything if you list down the functions of your business 90% of the functions of the business remains the same you have sales you have purchases you have customer service you have test and measure you have sales you have marketing everything is there what we clearly work on as a coach one to one is those systems that are there to be in place and i would like to ask each and every person who is out there where did you learn to be a business owner tell me one university in the world including oxford harvard who teaches you to be a great business owner there is none even today that is the kind of content as a coach we help you develop we give you that formula and also being beside you help you implement those formulas it's not a classroom teaching wherein we are standing out here and we are just teaching you that this is how you go out and do it because when a business owner goes out and does it or implements it in his business that is where the real challenge starts so that is where we work on one to one coaching wherein we work with the business owner one hour a week and we expect he works on the business rather than in the business for at least 5 6 hours in that week to achieve those results to set those systems because 80% of your work should be systemized and 20% should be humanized so we work on the systemization of that 80% of your business functions so that your business clearly works without you that's what we call as a definition of a true business a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you so that is how our coaching works and uh, would uh, love uh, to have any inquiries uh, that come through business x or uh, the clients here and would give you more insights on the same because i'm sure there's a lot more to talk about on the same wonderful so uh, with this i guess we'll just wrap up our session thank you so much vijay once again thank you for being such a great speaker and uh, for being very patient with all the questions as well uh, anything else you would like to say uh, thank you so much anali for the opportunity i would like to thank business x uh, for this wonderful opportunity and uh, it was a great audience here i'm sure you have five uh, action points guys do take action on those action points think about it before you close your laptop note down those points get on working on them and i'm sure if you want any help i'll i am there as i think mr bharat is asking uh, the contact number so uh, sorry will you share the details on the chat or you want me to uh, you uh, can just type it down on the chat as well for all the attendees great i'll just put it up for your mr bharat and everybody out there So guys i am just putting in my mobile number and also my uh, email address you can uh, get in touch with me for any more details that you would be looking at i would uh, be more than happy to help you in your uh, business and uh, letting you know more explanation on the presentation today or how it can be helpful in your business all the details are there in the chat and uh, thank you so much once again sonali thank you so much mr sex for this opportunity thank you thank you vijay thank you to all our attendees for uh, being very patiently attending the session we hope uh, we really hope we were able to add some value to your lives through the session and if you have any questions anything that you want to ask if you want the recording of the session or anything like that please get in touch with me and if you have any questions for vijay as well please get in touch with him and we'll just make sure that we answer your queries and yeah we'll see you next time with another session thank you so much Sure thank you so much guys thank you